whatever you want. Okay? Questions on that? Those of you especially who weren't here, make sure that you're getting caught up on this and then you, that you will. There has been no, nothing that has ever been shown or proven that homosexuality has anything to do with genes or biology. Okay? Even if it did, though, the church would say, I think that just because something is genetic or biological, we have, a pre, we have an attraction to something, doesn't mean that we, we should act on it just because that thing is in, in, in the biological makeup of who we are. Okay. Homosexuality, if it's okay in God's eyes, then the Bible is completely useless. Old and New Testament, in multiple places, say homosexual acts are an abomination, a grave offense against God. The Catholic Church upholds that teaching as well. So you have two options. God is cool with homosexuality. Homosexual acts, should say. Okay. So God is okay with homosexual acts or um, what the Bible and the church say about it is correct. Okay? There's no middle ground on that issue. Okay? It's, it's important to realize this. Bam or bam. Some people will say, well, I think God's really okay with homosexual acts and I also like the rest of the Bible. Well, then how are you now... If the Bible is very clear that this is an abomination when you act on homosexual attraction, right? We all understand that the Bible says that, right? Okay, it's very clear on that. Old Testament, New Testament, many places. So if you say, well, the Bible, that, was just, that was just something that they didn't really understand everything then... Then you have to ask yourself, well then who decides for you what else is that way in the Bible? Do you see the problem there? Because it quickly becomes, who, who, who then quickly starts to decide what is, ma what is changing in the Bible and what is not? We do. Right? I decide. If I can go through and say, look, homosexuality is banned in the Bible, the Acts... Homosexual acts are banned in the Bible, considered an abomination before God, right? But I think that that was a cultural thing, therefore God's really okay with it. It was just they didn't understand it at the time. Where do you stop? You are basically then saying, I am now deciding what goes and what stays in the Bible. You become the editor, and you should just read the Bible with a red pen and just cross out the things that you, don't think, that you think have changed since then. And what then, what then if, you, if you're throwing that out, what stays? Besides what you just think is nice, what you like, okay? Yeah. It says a lot of stuff is an abomination in the Bible that we've since thrown out. That's exactly what it In St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I think it's the letter to the Corinthians, where he talks about how women should be silent in church. No. Is that what you meant? Okay. Okay. That women, that women, that women should be silent. Is that what it was? Okay. I believe you. Does it say in there, when it says that, does it say it's an abomination when a woman does speak? I, that, I didn't see that. Okay. So, yes, I think there are things in there. Okay, I just think, I, I guess what, we're, what I'm saying is if it's that strong of a word in the Bible, that something is an abomination, and then we go around and we say, oh, not anymore, 
it's actually okay, then you're basically saying, look, I become the editor of the Bible that I'm reading and I decide. It was, it's in Leviticus, right? And then it's picked up by St. Paul in the, the quotes that we looked at in Romans, letter to, the Tim, letter to Timothy. So it's not just in the Old Testament even, it's in the Old and the New Testament. How do we know that it wasn't just the writer's opinion? I know the Bible doesn't have a lot of that necessarily, but I mean, how do we know that? So, but anything basically, you're, you're, you're saying that I guess what I'm trying to say is that when, it, when the Bible says something that strongly, that this is an abomination before God, it doesn't use that language very often. So when we go ahead and say, when we take things like, that's an abomination before God, and then we say, now, that, that that's not the case anymore, then, then that means that the Bible really got everything jacked up. Because if it's saying, look, this is one of the top things that, can get, that, that God can be offended by, and now it doesn't even, that actually it's okay, then everything that's beneath that would be, yeah, it becomes irrelevant and, and, and not credible. I'd have to look at the language. I, I, I believe the, 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 the Ten Commandment actually translates to, or the, the um, Fifth Commandment, is um, you hear it sometimes as "Thou shalt not kill," but it's also I've heard it, that the translation there is really more like "Thou shalt not murder." But I mean, I'm not sure what the, I believe in there. Yes, that basically to murder someone is an abomination. Yeah. Right, right. But, you know, obviously the church has, uh, the church has thrown that out. You know, I mean, you know, that thrown yeah. out that punishment. Right. right. So I guess you could maybe make that would be, that, that, that abomination. Well, okay, yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And, and I think that, first of all, it's important to realize that, they, that if they say it's punishable by death, that doesn't necessarily mean that, they, that it's considered an abomination in Leviticus. You know, Right, right. And I think that would be one that Jesus himself in the Gospel, remember, rescues Mary Magdalene. She's committed adultery and she's preparing to be stoned for that. Okay? And then Jesus directly intervenes and says, let those of you who have not sinned cast the first stone. Exactly. The Blessed Virgin throws a stone. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what we would say probably to that is that basically in the Old Testament, like if it says the husband and wife that commit adultery, they both should be killed, right? Jesus actually calls us to an even higher standard to, to say that that is, um, yes, but they still would, des basically, they would still deserve death. In the, in the eyes of God in that case, a husband and wife that have an affair or whatever, they would still deserve death because of the old law. But in the new law, Christ says, I call you to an even higher standard to, to, to love each other and, and to not judge. But when God says, this is an abomination to me, that language is very different. And I, just, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, when we say that what was equated as being an abomination to God with now being actually okay, there's virtually nothing in the Bible then that 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 becomes that becomes binding or in any way relevant.
But no, all, all good thoughts and questions, keep them coming. Okay? The Catholic Church upholds that teaching as well. Uh, the teaching in the Scriptures, obviously, um, about homosexuality. We made a big distinction. Those of you who weren't here on Friday, Kenny and Sierra, want you guys to stand up. Elijah, want you to stand up, please. Homosexual attraction is not a sin. Is not a sin. Neither is wanting a beer, even if it is wanting it really badly. Alcoholism and so on and so forth. Attraction is never considered to be something that is sinful. But when we act on it, it becomes a sin. Okay, homosexual action is a sin. That's a big distinction that we made between the. the um, what if you fantasize about having a beer? It's considered lust. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, yeah, I guess you could technically lust after alcohol. Because I think, I think lust could be taken out of its sexual, typical sexual context. Sam? What's that? 60 Minutes. I did. I did. Yeah. I don't typically watch it, but I knew Archbishop Dolan was going to be on there, so I did. Yeah, I mean, he... Yeah, no, I, I thought it was... I mean, he had a beer in his hand, but I mean, it was like... I don't think they were making him out to be a drunk or anything, but... Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it's not... I'm sorry, they were saying... He was saying, if, if I begin to lust, if I begin to imagine it, that's when something becomes lustful. But simply having the attraction in the mind of the church, even if it's a homosexual attraction... A homosexual attraction is not a sin in the mind of the church because it's something that you don't control. You, you, you in the moment, I have no control in this moment over what I'm attracted to. Now, I could have made decisions or lived or had things happen to me that have influenced me right now having this attraction, but I can't ever control it. Does that make sense? So the church would never judge... Yeah, no, I agree. There always is. Heterosexual or homosexual, there's a thin line between having the attraction and then turning it into lust. The young freshman boy running around out there, he doesn't know the difference, most likely. He's like, he's having the attraction and a lot of times it turns into then mental fantasy or whatever, right? So, but we have to figure out where, as adults, we need to figure out where that line is between it, when is it attraction and when does it turn into lust. And we need to find that, okay? But yeah, you're right, there is a thin line there. But as long as it stays as just an attraction, we can never be accused in the mind of the church of sinning. Okay? All right. So, there's the review. Now, we're on to the new stuff today. Okay? Church and scriptures on marriage. The scriptures, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body or one flesh. That's in Genesis 2.24. Okay? What does one body mean? The two of them become one flesh. That means that they're having sex, that they have sex, that they consummate that relationship. Okay, Christ then, this is the old law in Genesis, Okay, the, the um, old covenant. Christ makes marriage a sacrament through the church. So what is marriage a sign of then? Make sure you know that. That's a review. The love of Christ and His church. Okay. Now, is sex then an arbitrary part of being that sign? So if marriage in the mind of the church is to be, um, to, to be a witness or a sign of the love that Christ has for His church, right? is sex an arbitrary part of being that sign? What do you think and why? Arbitrary, meaningless. Um, you know, why not? I think while those two, while Christ's love for his church and the love between two people have the same goals, they are still separate. Because I think because it, it wasn't necessary, then there would be no need to, be no need to have produce offspring. Like you and I, as friends, could be a sign of Christ's love right. 
and for his church. You're exactly right. Yeah. So, sex is not an arbitrary thing. Part of being this, what does Christ? What does the love between Christ and His church produce? Offspring, baptism, new people being baptized and being brought into the church. Okay. The sex then is not the sexual act is not an arbitrary part of marriage in the mind of the church. What heresy that we've talked about is it that would say that sex, a bodily function, is an arbitrary or meaningless or, or at least lower on the scale part of that relationship? Dualism. Dualism. Make sure you get that down. Dualism. Body and mind being separate. Soul, okay, body and mind dualism or body-soul dualism. The idea behind dualism is that my body and my soul are separate, completely separate. So, if dualism were true, then two men, two women, two, a man and a woman who aren't married could all be signs of the love that Christ has for His church. But my body is involved in that relationship. I can't just ignore the bodily aspect of that. So the church considers, you are not married in the mind of in the church. You are not married until you have consummated your marriage. Okay. If a, if the man in the relationship is impotent and unable to have sex, the marriage doesn't happen. If you, there have been annulments in the past where people have filed the paperwork. They, they, you, don't, you basically would just have to say, if you say, my husband and I or my wife and I never had sex, that's it. There is no, annul, there is no, there is no year-long annulment process. It's done. Marriage is annulled. Because you never had sex. What's that? That would be a big problem if they lied about it. I mean, you're lying about... You probably, if you're going to lie about your annulment, you probably wouldn't care if you got the annulment in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously God recognizes and knows what's going on even though you got the annulment. God's going to get you. Exactly. Um, so the church is very much sees sexuality and the spiritual aspects of the marriage as being one. And you try and separate them and you get problems. Okay? We good? Everybody doing all right? Marriage requires three things as a review. Indissolubility, fertility, and fidelity in the mind of the church. Needs to be open. Marriage is for babies and bonding. So it's three things that are required. Two things that it's for. Babies and bonding in the mind of the church. Okay. Someone wrote on their test, babies and bondage. And I think they were serious. And that is not the right answer. Um, have to talk with that person. I don't remember. I don't think it was this class, anyways. But, anyways. <clears throat> okay. A key, a key, key, key. Catholic social teaching is involved here. So hopefully you remember something from last semester, but you probably don't remember much, and that's okay. Common question. With this issue of homosexual marriage, the common question that people ask a lot of times is this, why should I care what other people do? Why, does it, why would I get it? It's none of my business. I personally don't agree in homosexual marriage, but who am I to care if the other people down the street or in another city believe it's okay? Have you heard that before? Well, are you saying that you don't believe in it personally, it's not your opinion that it's okay, but you're not going to tell them that, or just that you're not going to? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's what some people, many people will say. Many people will say, I, I personally am against it, but I should not, why should I care if other people are for it and it makes them happy, and so on and so forth. Well, so you're not saying that you're, okay, like, not you personally, but in the case of Yeah. 
Right. 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 Yes.